This is the lab on simple machines. As you see from the motivation, motivation here, the six bullet points show that the lever, the wheel and axle, inclined plane, block and tackle, wedge and screw. These are the classical simple machines. There are a couple more, which is the gears and hydraulics. I don't have them on here because I only have the classical ones. There's a footnote why that is, because in ancient times they just couldn't be produced. So anyway, I left those two out of, uh, out of these here. Out of this list and if you actually look in other languages interestingly enough we find six simple machines when you look them up in English but in other languages like French or German you find four or five because some of them for example are actually a combination the wheel and axle is actually the a lever that is gently attached to a wheel or somebody could say hey the inclined plane is just a wedge or the screw itself is just a wedge on a helical plane inclined plane all right let's get going here so pre-lab let's see experiment so these are the objectives for that figure out the actual mechanical advantage and what a simple machine is doing and so on and then comes the theory part and notice this is very very long because once i started writing something about one simple machine i just couldn't stop i had to write something about everything so anyway, then we get to the equipment needed. Doesn't look like a lot. I will show the incline in the video. I will actually leave out the pulley system, the actual experiment, but you have to use an applet in order to do that. All right, so let's look at the data table. In the video, you will see that I have an example for the incline plane and the block and tackle. So please follow the two examples closely. This, by the way, is the block and tackle setup. Just a fancy word for calling it the pulley system. Okay, then you will do the, I'm sorry, not you, but I did the inclined plane in the video. So look out for this one here. Then I will skip as an experiment myself, the block and tackle. I also don't have an applet for the incline, but I do have an applet and I think it's really cool for the pulley simulation and it really mimics what I wanted to do in the actual lab. So this one you have to do. Then the video continues. This is an actual kind of like almost industrial way of doing it. So jacking up a car in order to change a tire, well, that would be the screw being used as a car jack and you will see there's an example in the video for the inclined plane i used the ramp and some heavy objects on this card here for the block and tackle you can see them right here so they're industrial sized and i put a lot of water into this bucket here and use this block and tackle in order to pull the bucket up and see what i get and finally, I think, the lever. So here I used a shovel as a lever in order to lift part of this armchair that you see over here. And then I have a fulcrum down here. And I think that's actually the lap on simple machine. So for the next, wow, I think it's in about an hour, I have all the videos. And at some point, you also have to use that pulley simulation applet. Alright, so this is the incline here, and I'm just going to pull this one here up. These are 2 kilograms, i put it up here, and that's just by lifting it. Of course, I could just lift it up here instead of using the incline, but there are things that are much heavier than that, and you really do want to use a simple machine, so, such as the incline plane, and of course this is just a demonstration, so I'm just going to lift these 2 kilograms up here, which is 20 new approximately 20 newtons, 19.6 newtons, exactly. And now I'm gonna pull them up the incline, and I expect, of course, to measure less force. The incline I measure to be two meters long, which means I should have an ideal mechanical advantage of about two, two meters versus the one meter I have over there. Actually, it's 90 centimeters. So a little bit over two, which means I should be measuring only 10 newtons, but if you want to come close and 
just put the camera on here and as I pull it up you can see that I'm actually measuring 60 newtons so it's not around 10 newtons but 60 newtons but of course that's the friction in the board which means I still have a mechanical advantage and I may want want to use the incline depending on what I'm how I'm using it of course it's a very steep incline too but it turns out that I actually have to use more work altogether but I still have the mechanical advantage of having to apply less force and that was actually it. This is the analysis of the example data that I took for the inclined plane. And first I'm going to grab the equations for that analysis. Students don't need it here for the example data. I need it right now, um, but I don't want to have it in several places and then have to edit every single place all the time. That's why I only post it in one place. I know it might be a little bit off the recording, so I'm going to try this one here. Maybe. Here, here we go. Whoops. There we go. Okay, so for the inclined plane, what I took was 2.00 kilograms was the load. And I wanted to lift it a height of 0 0.90 meters. And the slant length of the incline was 2.0 meters. So from that, I'm going to calculate the weight of the load is 19.6 newtons because 2 kilograms times the acceleration of 9.8 is 19.6 newtons. Then the amount of work that I would use in order to just lift it, those 0.9 zero meters is 19.6 newtons times 0 0.90 meters and that comes out to 17.6 joules. I have my calculator lying on the side here and I trust that you're going to plug in these numbers correctly. Let's just multiply these two numbers according to this equation here. Then the ideal mechanical advantage is the slant length over so the 2.0 meters divided by the height of 0 0.90 meters so it's a little bit over 2 comes out to 2.2 rounded no units on this one here you do because you divide meters by meters so that means that the expected effort force should be this much smaller compared to the load which means that I would have to apply only roughly half of that force and the equation is over here effort force equals load force divided by the ideal mechanical advantage so 19.6 newtons divided by 2.2 comes out to 18.9 newtons and of course that is the idea of a simple machine it reduces the amount of force necessary by quite a bit in this case to about half. That would be the ideal one. However, you notice that I did measure 60 newtons because I have friction on the board. So I still have a mechanical advantage. It's not that much as it should be, but still there's some in there. Of course, in for a regular incline, you may not want to use as steep of an incline as what I did because you want to reduce the amount of force appreciably and have a large mechanical advantage actual and ideal okay the work that is done with the incline is this one over here so work you know with the incline is the force with which I actually moved it times the length so 60 newtons times 2.0 meters comes of course out to 32 point 32 joules and now the actual mechanical advantage is the load force I'm sorry the the um, yeah, the force of the load divided by the actual measured force so 19.6 divided by 16 comes out to 1.2 so the actual mechanical advantage is only 1.2 20 percent the efficiency is the lifting force 
I'm sorry, the lifting work divided by the incline work, so 17.6 divided by 32 comes out to 55 percent. Ideally, we would get for an efficiency 100 percent, meaning that no matter how you do it, you exert the same amount of work. That means no matter how you do it, by lifting or by work with the incline, you come up with the same amount of work, you don't get a free lunch, but of course the work with the incline takes into consideration that there was friction on the board and therefore this number here in this case is appreciably larger than this number um, and that's why we only get an efficiency of 55 percent. You might get for your inclines efficiencies between 20 and 30 percent because I recommend that you use um, more shallow inclines um, but then for the uh, more shallow inclines you're going to have a larger mechanical advantage which is the idea behind an inclined plane. So this was the analysis for my example data for the inclined plane. Okay, so this is the block and tackle, and I had assembled this yesterday, and then it fell apart on me, and you would have to keep in mind that that easily could happen to you too, so now I'm going to take it apart again in order to put it back together. I just do this here on the table to, and then you see that I have to move all of this here before the beginning of this whole thing. And then I make a knot. Great. And let's stop the camera because you don't need to. Alright, so of course you didn't need to see how. I got rid of the knot. So I'm going to string it over here and I know that's where this will slip. Um, you might have slightly different pulleys, so this might be a little bit different for you. I think my pulleys are a little bit easier to handle with because they're open on one side. Okay, one important thing to point out as you put it together is always keep it under tension. Because if you don't, then the hauling part, which is the lower pulley, will actually unravel on you and the string will come off. And of course, I shouldn't be talking too much and let it focus on this. goes well and then it's done. Okay. Now I actually ran out of sheaves here, so I'm just gonna put it over this one here again. And in order to keep the tension, put it on this counterweight for now. Here we go. All right. If you could come around and film kind of like here, this part would be cool. Okay. I put on one kilogram right now, respectively. I'm going to put a second one on. I have to think how I did that. Yeah, I think that's the way I did it. Keeping the tension. Everything falls apart on me, then I guess I didn't keep the tension. Hopefully. Okay. All right. So now I got two kilograms on here, and I have nine strings holding it. So four, four, and another one. So nine strings are holding it, which means that the force with which with, I, with which I have to pull should be only one ninth of the weight that I have on here. I have two kilograms, which is roughly twenty newtons. 
divide by 9 and I'm back to a little bit over 2 newtons that's what I should measure however of course I have friction in here and I also have to pull the lower pulley up I should be measuring more than a little bit over 2 newtons and that's what I'm doing here and then when I do that here again keep the tension I'm gonna hold on to this because I don't want it to just totally fall apart here and then I'm gonna pull here and here we go if you could come over here and try to film the numbers on here on the on the spring scale and from my angle I want to say it's 3.3 .3 newtons what I'm measuring you kind of see that too mm -hmm. okay so and then you would pull and pull and pull it up one meter and of course I have nine strings on here which means that I would have to pull nine meters in order to haul it up that one meter I'm not going to do that now it's just a demonstration for you you would actually have to do that for the entire nine meters if you have this point here Again, I don't want to lose it just in case I have to tape something. I would be actually done. What you would do is you would start out perhaps with seven strings or six strings, whichever you're going to do. If you do the odd ones or the, or the even ones, that means even number of strings or odd numbers, number of strings. You get, if you could come around here and film here, you get an odd number of strings if you tie it if you start tying it here you get an even number of strings if you keep start tying it there and then you would start with let's say seven strings and you would go down to five and a three and do all your measurements and I think with that I'm actually done this is the analysis for the example data for my example data for the block and tackle and I'm first gonna grab the equations that I need again I have just posted these here in one place for student use so that I only have to edit it in one place if I need to there we go and now because I'm looking at the block and tackle data I can move this over somewhat there we go Okay, I used two kilograms because it was so exact. I'm gonna because I used regular lab weights. It was pretty much exactly 2.00 kilograms. That means the weight of that load was 19.6 newtons. I multiply by the acceleration due to gravity of 9.8, so 2.00 times 9.8 is 19.6 newtons. I was going to lift it up a token height of 1.00 meters. You see that in my experiment I didn't do that but I just want to use it as a demonstration. I just didn't want it to fall apart on me while I'm doing this this demonstration. Um, you would have to pay attention to it because you're gonna have really a one meter um, length in each of the strings that you have on there. Okay. The other things that I measured was that I had nine strings that were supporting the lower pulley that is the hauling part and the rest yeah which pretty much this was measured respectively um, calculated okay so the work without the pulleys is the lifting work here which is multiply the force of 19.6 newtons times the height of 1.00 meters so of course I come up with 19.6 joules number of strings is 9 that was supporting the lower pulley the expected effort force is I'm gonna get this here to the next line it's easier to see is the load the weight of the load divided by the ideal mechanical advantage so 19.6 divided by 9 comes out to around it 2.2 .2 newtons so I should be measuring 2.2 .2 newtons when I attach the spring scale to the 
hauling line and pull on it. Um, however, as you will see, or as, as you saw in the video, I actually measured 3.3 newtons. Oh yeah, that's, I guess I should have put that in the early yeah, because I already measured it. Um, so I measured quite a bit more, but that of course is the friction in the string, between the string and the sheaves, as well as pulling up the weight of the lower pulley. Still, I have quite a bit of a mechanical advantage, and that of course is the idea of an of a simple machine. Um, let's actually multiply, um, determine this one here first, hauling line distance. D is of course, I have to pull it up one meter, but I have nine strings supporting it, and each one of these needs to be pulled up one meter, so the hauling line has to be pulled a total of nine point zero zero meters. That's pretty much exact because this one is an exact number and this one here was a token height of 1.00 meters. The amount of work that I therefore expanded is written, let's see, right here. So the amount of work is the moving force, 3.3 .3 newtons, times the hauling line distance of 9.00 meters. So that comes out to 29.7 joules. when you compare the, this one here to this one here, these two should be equal if it was an ideal simple machine, but again there's friction in there and you have to pull the weight off the lower pulley, so that's why actually the work here is, by using the pulleys is actually more, but of course the reason why you still do that is because you have that mechanical advantage, you have to exert less force, in this case of course actual measured force due to friction and the weight of the lower pulley. So therefore the actual mechanical advantage comes out to, that's written here, divide the force of the load, the weight of the load, by the actual measured force, 19.6 divided by 3.3, comes out to 5.9. Again, no units because I divide force by force. So that means that I still reduced the force by approximately a factor of six. The efficiency is written here as the lifting work, 19.6 divided by 29.7 joules by using the pulleys, and that comes out to 66%. So 100% would have meant that I used the same amount of work either way with having a certain mechanical advantage. Um, and of course I don't get a free lunch, so it has to be 100% max. Um, but by using the pulley system, the block and tackle, I have an efficiency less than 100%, appreciably less than 100%, um, which means I actually expand more work. And of course we see that right here, 29.7 compared to 19.6. But I'm willing to exert more work because the force that I used in order to pull that was appreciably less than that of the force. But of course, again, I don't get a free lunch, I actually had to pull more string than actually the object was lifted. Okay, that was the analysis of my example data for the block and tackle. All right, I'm going to try this in one take, which is not true because this is already my second take. So this is going to be the board that will be an incline in a moment. The board is 81 centimeters long or 0.81 meters. I'm going to put these thingies underneath so it's going to lift it each time by 0.02 meters or 2 centimeters, 4 centimeters, 6 centimeters, or 0 0.04 and 0 0.06 meters. So we're going to have an incline here. And then we're going to take these two weights here, they're identical, they're each 500 grams. So when I put this one on here it says 500 grams and 5 newtons. Actually it doesn't say 5 newtons, or in this case 
1,000 grams and 10 newtons because they didn't put the newton scale on here. This is a scale that's supposed to read weight and force, not just mass. Yes, the two are almost synonymous, but still there's a difference. This ought to read force. This one here, unfortunately, does. The other one, I'm going to use that in a moment. In any case, I'm going to take this one here, lift these up here, and I would have to exert a force of 10 newtons and lift it over a distance a height of 0 0.02 meters and that will give me the work done by simply lifting it without the incline. Now the incline is supposed to make it easier for me so I would have to exert less force. This is where I'm going to use the other spring scale. I'm going to tear it first though because this will make it easier for me to pull along Imagine that you have big beer barrels here or something else, a piano pushed up here, and that's what an incline would be for. Or a wheelchair, you know, lifting somebody in a wheelchair is going to be a whole lot harder than it is to actually have them roll up the incline or push or pull them there. So here we go. I'm going to pull these up from the bottom here, so a distance of 0.81 meters, and I apparently have to exert 3.1 newtons. There we go. All right, that was actually the first measurement. The second one, so we make the incline higher, 0 0.04 centimeters. And pull this one up here. And I'm measuring 3.4 Newtons. And technically I'm supposed to pull it all the way up here. There we go. And then here, of course, the steeper the incline is, the more force I have to exert. You will see, on the other hand, the, also the more efficient it gets, simply because actually on a steeper incline there is less friction, which is what I have to work against. But of course, we would, if you use an incline, you probably want to go with a shallow one. So this one here reads 3.5 newtons. And these are actually the measurements. And then my incline falls apart. So I tried pretty hard to find an incline applet that I like that applies to what I want to show and I just couldn't I mean this is this one here is actually from PHET physics educational technologies but it just doesn't work for me not what, what I want I can do this here I can lift this up and down here and this person here can push the file cabinet down and then friction slows it down or the person can push this file cabinet up and there it goes or I can change the position of the file cabinet <coughs> and do this to the person or he can push it into the wall there, or maybe not. In any case, it just didn't work. Didn't also do me any good if I tried to change this here to a refrigerator, and the piano is really small. That would be the coolest thing actually to show, um, because that's where you need a ramp, you know, push a piano up a ramp or a refrigerator, I guess. In any case, it just didn't work for me. So we're skipping this part here. There is no applet incline. This is a great applet because it's doing exactly what I would be doing in the real experiment. It starts out like this one here and then it has all kinds of things set up for measuring and computations and so on and I said exactly like I wanted in my experiment. Let me just hit the play button here. Okay, that didn't work. So let me actually increase, increase the force here and this is kind of how it works. But I really want to mimic my real experiment. So I'm going to reset this one here. And here's what I'd like you to do. Change to the double compound. And when you do that, notice the little hand grabs right here. This is where the spring scale would be. And this little part right here, that would be 
the hauling line and if you increase the applied force you can see this is what's called the hauling line the other four that you see here these are the segment lines or line segments and that's also in a pulley system the ideal mechanical advantage which by the way which by the way they have written right here notice it says four right here i consider this one over here by the way the cheat sheet all right let me introduce you to the whole thing here so again i'm gonna reset all of this so double compound i like you to increase the load to the maximum of 10 newtons which is one kilogram i actually use the same number in my real experiment increase the distance to as much as you can 0.2 meters I actually prefer one meter but I think the reason that, that they didn't do it is that uh, if you were to lift this one here one meter you would actually have to pull this one down the hauling line here four meters and that gets off the screen maybe that's why they restricted it to 0.2 meters okay if we left the friction at zero then we would get perfect data and 100 percent efficiency which is not the case in the real experiment we do have friction between the segment lines and the pulleys and of course we also have to um, raise the lower pulley system here which by the way they didn't put in here as um, being used for the analysis so they assume that it actually has no mass that's a little bit off oh well so let's increase the friction here and I just use an arbitrary value of 0.24 it could be uh, lots of things oh by the way as you can see this one here has two significant figures this actually also has two significant figures okay notice here right here so this is actually 0 0.20 and this one too this also has two significant figures actually kind of three but let's call it two all right so we're going to deal with two significant figures all the way through here the pulley diameter we really don't need i think that's that affects actually the friction simply because they're larger so the line segments um, have more contact so we're just going to leave it at the point two then this one over here the measurements we're going to turn these on and then actually it says right here only the first five are displayed so if i check them all you know i would have to turn some off so it can show the lower ones so let me just leave it on here by the way all these measurements here i call it this the cheat sheet because this is virtually what you find in my table on the real experiment as well as this this applet simulation all right, other things we could do is we could show the forces on strands here. Actually, I haven't tried that yet, so let's see what happens there. Uh, okay, I'm not sure if I see something here. All right, oh well. Let me just reset this one here and turn it off. Hmm, I haven't investigated that yet. Anyway, we could also look at it from the side or the front, but I actually do want to look at it from an, at an angle because here I can definitely see it has four segment lines. On a side view, actually two of them overlap so it's hard to see right also we have four segment lines and later for the triple compound we have six and then for the quadruple we're gonna have eight and if you count them it is eight and of course this one that you pull on here doesn't count for the segment lines because that's the hauling line let me go back to the double compound by the way notice that the first line segment is attached to the upper pulley and that therefore we will get an even number sometimes i rig it up in the lab just like that starting at the upper pulley sometimes at the lower pulley at which point i actually end up with an odd number of line segments but that doesn't matter as far as figuring out the experiment is concerned and taking the measurement in any case we have four six and eight segment lines or line segments which you will find in the table in the lab menu okay let's start out with double compound and this these are the parameters that i want you to choose at all times except of course you're gonna switch then from the double to the triple to the quadruple one as you do that for the three sets of data to, that i want you to take all right so let's apply a force and so i'm going to pull this one up here and it reads 2.965 force by the way I tried to pull it up higher it doesn't get any higher I guess they put it in such a way that it matches the friction and as it matches the friction the two forces equal out to zero so zero acceleration then means constant velocity if you actually pulled it up higher if you were able to do that again I wasn't able to do that 
then actually the thing would accelerate, you would get faster and faster. That's probably not what you do when, when you are using a pulley system. You're probably trying to pull at a constant speed, which means your force has to match the frictional force to have zero acceleration and therefore have a constant velocity. Okay, so here we're done and we read off a bunch of numbers. So let's go over to the analysis. So I need a little bit more space here for the analysis. All right, still need to push it in a little bit here. And almost there, almost there. I guess now the experiment itself is off screen, but what can you do? There we go, that should work. All right, so I already put these parameters in here. As I said, I'd like you to keep the same parameters throughout. So one kilogram, which is the 10 newtons, which is over here, which you can see on the load. And then the height, the maximum height of 0 0.20 meters. And as I said, I like to keep this at two significant figures. Okay, then computing the work. And you can see these equations. If the equation is not listed here, it's over here, just off the screen, right here, I guess. Oh, shoot. <laughs> right over here so here would be the equations I guess I could have done that and so you have to apply these all right so I can get back here and oh yeah this is what I wanted to do yeah push them back in here there we go all right so the work without the pulleys just lifting the, the thing would be the height that it's going through the 0.2 meters times the weight of the load so 10 times 0.2 is 2.0 joules right there by the way that's this one right here the work output is also that what I call the work without the pulleys and that also matches the potential energy so this one right here, what I call the work lift, they call the work output, respectively potential energy. Okay. The ideal mechanical advantage in a pulley system is really easy to determine. Just count the number of light segments that are supporting the weight. There were four, so the ideal mechanical advantage is four. That should cut down the expected effort force to one quarter of the original. So as I'm trying to... Um, lift a load that has 10 newtons i should be able to apply just one quarter of that so 2.5 newtons okay that's what my spring scale should read however there's friction so it won't read that all right the hauling part distance notice here they wrote 0.8 meters this makes total sense i'm going to write it again with two significant figures makes total sense because i need to pull each of these strings here, these four strings right here, I need to pull them up 0.2 meters, each of them. That means I have to pull a total of 0.8 meters because that string, the last one here on the right hand side, that one is connected to all the others. So it has to pull down 0.8 meters in order to make each one of them go up by 0.2. It's all one string. Okay, so that's the 0.8 meters. Let's see. Push this out a little bit more. All right. Oh, actual measured force. Shouldn't have put a, pulled out so much. Okay, here it is. 2.965. A little bit too much on the side of sig fig. Let's just run it to 2 sig fig 3.0. And I can't... actually measure that accurately anyway in a real experiment. I mean, I can only measure to 2 sig fig with the spring scales that I have. So 3.0 newtons. And I do need that measurement from here. It needs to tell me that that's what over here in the spring scale right here, what the handle is grabbing on. That's what I would read off right there. All right. So let's see what else we got. Work without the pulleys then actually means me pulling with 3.0 newtons for a distance of 0.8 meters, which means I come up with 2.4 joules. That's the amount of work that I put in. That 2.4 joules matches this one here, what they call the work input. I call the work done with pulleys. Same thing. Of course, again, I rounded to two significant figures. 
Okay, the actual mechanical advantage is comparing the work done with the pulleys to the work done without the pulleys. Notice I actually had to invest more work into it because of the friction than if I hadn't done it, but at least the pulley system made it easier for me. It cut down the expected force, respectively the actual measured force from 10 newtons down to 2.5 or 3.0 newtons. So it makes the job easier. I'm not going to get a free lunch. It's still the same amount of work, respectively even more because of the friction. In any case, the actual mechanical advantage is being multiplied, I'm sorry, not multiplied, determined by dividing the 10 newtons here, the load force by the applied force, so 10 divided by 3.0 comes out to 3.33333. Technically two significant figures, but for the mechanical advantage, I really like to have integers there because you're not going to talk about a machine and say, hey, it has a mechanical advantage of 3.33. No, let's just call it three. That's good enough. By the way, when I uncheck a few things over here, we can see there they are, right? So here is the ideal mechanical advantage of four, again, the four line segments, and then here the 3.37, and as I said, I round it to the nearest integer, which is three. All right, and then last, the efficiency, that would be the lift work here divided by the work done with the pulleys. If these two were equal, we would come up with one if we divided them, which means 100% efficiency, but we're dividing by a larger number, so we get something less than one, in fact, we get 0.84. Notice this one over here, right? So as we divide these two, 0.84, but then we're going to... Whoops. Shift the decimal point in order to get percent. So 84%, that's the efficiency for this experiment. Again, we're not getting a free lunch. In fact, we have to do a little bit more work because of friction, but at least it makes the job easier. The biggest pulleys that you see these days, I believe, is actually in shipyards where they are unloading containers from container ships and they have these huge pulleys and therefore the machinery has to do, has to apply less force. They still have to do the same amount of work in order to lift them and then place them somewhere, but at least the machines can do it. All right, so what you have to do now is you have to use the applet in order to complete this one here using the triple compound and quadruple compound pulley systems. But just in case that the applet is not going to work for you, I actually will record this for you. But you still would have to do the calculations. All right, so here I'm going to reset this one here from my double compounds, leave everything else the same. You can click on everything here. And now switch to triple compound. There it is. And yeah, everything else stays the same. And I'm going to apply the force. Again, this is where it actually maxed out. And we give it a little time here. In the meantime, obviously it makes sense that the line segments, there are six of them. Also gives us the ideal mechanical advantage of six. That one I can, that much I can give away. And that as I'm lifting this here 0.2 meters, I should come up with 1.2 meters for the hauling line. In fact, it's going to show us that in just a moment, right? Oh, it is getting a little off screen here. No, oh, it really goes off screen. Okay. There it is, 1.2 meters, right? And then this one here, again, you can use as a sheet sheet and I would have to click a few off after you read these off here so you can see the remainder so these are the remainders right there's the six and I like you to also calculate them in the table all right and preferably I like you to do this simulation here only if the simulation doesn't load for you on your computer yeah go ahead and use what I'm showing you here all right I'm going to reset this one here and then click on quadruple compound and there would be eight lines now 
Again, I'm going to push this one up. Apparently, we need only 1.6 newtons because there are so many segment lines supporting it, so it really cut down on that. We have eight lines supporting it, so the mechanical advantage is eight. And if I divide 10 newtons by eight, I come up with 1.25 newtons. That would be the ideal force. And I gave it a different name, right? What did I call it? The expected effort force is what I gave it the name. But of course, the applied force, the actual applied force is larger due to friction. And in a moment, we will see that the hauling line goes down by 1.6 meters because it needs to lift each one of these eight lines by 0.2 meters. There it is, 1.6. And again, these are actually the first five measurements here. So you can jot these down or use them as a cheat sheet. And then we're going to turn these off here and you can see the remainder there. All right, that's it for this pulley simulation. Okay, so this is about the screw and of course a car jack is using a screw and so here we have the simple machine in fact I already lifted up I think you can see that right here um, and I notice it takes quite a bit less force okay I'm gonna mention a few numbers but um, don't write them down at that, that point I in fact I will explain in a moment here why not okay I take this dump. This, this. I take this dump. I take this car regularly to the dump to, to uh, get rid of the garbage, and they have an electronic scale there, and it always comes in at like 4,000 some pounds, and when it's empty, um, without the garbage, pretty much exactly 4,000 pounds. Well, I have a couple of kayaks on top of the car now, and um, then I have some stuff inside. So let's assume that the total mass of the car right now is. Um, is 4,200 4, pound mass. And again, don't write that down at this point. Okay, with the car jack, I'm lifting only a quarter of the entire car. So approximately 1,050 pounds, which we calculated would be 480 kilograms. However, I'm actually not lifting the tire or any of the suspension here of the axle. So it should be actually appreciably less than those 480 kilograms and of course the engine block is in the front and so at this point here as we're filming I really don't know um, how much it is and I hope that I get a better estimate later on and put it uh, as a caption into the video anyway we lifted it up as we lifted up um, those 480 kilograms which is not the which is really not the mass of, of what I'm actually lifting it's appreciably less but that would be in the neighborhood of 4,700 newtons and when I applied the force here I came up with um, I'm only measured 50 newtons it was actually relatively easy to do and it's it's hard for me to do that here by myself um, as Jerry is filming here um, yeah I think you can almost see it actually here yeah in fact I can hold it and you can see it. oh, it's about 40 newtons what it what it measures here um, but of course it's a little bit dangerous here so I don't want to do this whole thing um, over again um, so I measure about 40 newtons which means I have like an actual um, mechanical advantage of approximately 100 4700 divided by 40 or over 100 so it's like ex extreme mechanical advantage um, I doubt that I, I think what I'm really lifting is much less than 4700 newtons or 1050 pounds or 480 kilograms much less than that okay anyway i lifted it up to a certain height we measured that again i'm also not going to mention that but now i'm going to let it down and the only thing that i do during the video here is i count the rotations that i let it down and that of course would be also the rotations that i put in so it's the number of rotations times 2 pi times the radius we measured this one here to 22 centimeters um, that would be the amount of distance that I have to apply that 40 newtons of force through. And that one is actually a real measurement. Um, in fact, I didn't use these these ones here because the force was actually small enough that it hardly registered on, on this one here. So that's why I'm using this one here straight from a physics lab, which is actually pretty strong. And I measured 40 newtons, which is roughly 10 pounds. So I guess maybe this could have measured. Oh, well. Okay, so I'm going to let it down and I'm going to count the rotations. So one, two, three, 
four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And I'm gonna count a little more, but you notice I probably lost count a little bit by one or two. Oh well. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Okay, that's at this point I'm actually done and I noticed that in between 10 and 20 it actually got a whole lot easier which means I'm really not lifting that mass that I estimated earlier. In fact, I'm going to leave it. Yeah, so I have about 20 here. I'm just going to measure the height here and um, it's 73 and earlier I measured 82. So I measured I lifted it by about nine centimeters, which is three and a half inches. Um, but of course, I had to do 20 rotations times the radius times two pi, and that would give me the whole distance compared to just lifting it. This is the analysis for the example data for the screw, which was a car jack that I used to jack up my car. And here are, is a narrative that I'm just going to read. The scale of the central Kina landfill shows usually quite exactly 4,000 pounds for my, for the weight of my empty Dodge Caravan. That includes actually me. And it's, they have an accuracy of plus minus 20 pounds. And then once I measured it, that of those 4,000 pounds, 2,300 are in the front and 1,700 are in the back. So I just put the two front tires on the scale and the two rear tires on the scale. On the day I measured it, I had kayaks on top and some toads inside, which I estimate that's an extra 200 pounds, but I wasn't inside. So minus 200 pounds, which means it's still those 4,000 pounds. Now we jacked up the rear ride, which should be a half of the weight of the rear, thus 850 pounds. However, the tire axle and suspension were still on the ground and here there is, this is a really gross estimate that that is some fraction of that 850 pounds. So I surveyed a few people that gave me their opinion, including a few students, and I came on to a consensus of that. Well, it may be around 600 pounds without the tire axle and suspension that I'm actually lifting and that's what my data are about. And then, oh, I didn't mean to get this one here. Okay, and here's the Okay, and here is the analysis of those data. So I'm going to put in here that these I estimate to be 600 pounds, pound mass that is. Correct American unit would be slugs for the mass, but I'm just going to use the pound mass and I convert that to kilograms. And so that's 600. divide by 2.2 and that gives me the 272 kilograms or around 270 kilograms after all this is a very gross estimate here 600 pounds I should really just use one significant figure which I think I'll do at the very end okay weight of the load well that's simply multiplied by 9.8 or around a 10 so 2700 newtons the height, well, that's the height that I jacked up the car and I measured 0 0.09 meters. And the work that I would have to do without actually using a car jack, so that would be then 2,700 times 0 0.09 meters. 0 0.09 meters is 9 centimeters or 3.5 inches. There you go. 243 joules or simply 240 joules. The 
lead of the screw is this one here. It's the distance between adjacent spiral and this one here on this car jack here doesn't look like a spiral, but you can imagine that it should be in order to move through here. It needs to be spiral. So the distance between the two spiral and two spiral the, the distance between two consecutive spirals is 0.5 centimeters or 0 0.005 meters. Incidentally, that's also the radius of the shaft. So 0 0.005 meters. The radius of the handle itself, and that would be, oh, they don't show the handle here. So that's that's the one that I would have to attach right here. So I have a lever arm here, and that's 22 centimeters, roughly 8 inches. So 0.22 meters. Then the mechanical advantage is 2 pi times the radius of the handle divided by the distance, the lead of the screw. So that comes out to 2 pi times 0.22 divided by 0 0.005 and that's a whopping 280 times rounded mechanical advantage which is certainly something I want because I cannot lift 2,700 newtons or 600 pounds by myself and it should be relatively easy to do with the car jack so here's my mechanical advantage 280 when I calculate therefore the expected effort force I come up with divide the load 2700 newtons by the mechanical ideal mechanical advantage of 280 so divided by 280 comes out to around at 10 Newtons. By the way, the mechanical ideal mechanical advantage doesn't have any units because it's the ratio of the same unit measurement. So here, that's only 10 newtons. That's that's only about two pounds. It's kind of what I expect when I turn a handle that I only exert two pounds. And and when you jack up a car, you notice that it's actually relatively easy to do that with a jack. So huge mechanical advantage. That's expected at least. That's the ideal one. The actual one. Uh, could be a quite a bit smaller still. Okay, number of rotations. I measured that in order to jack it up. That was three and a half inches, nine centimeters, 0 0.09 meters. I had to rotate the handle 20 times. And then the distance that I rotated, that's actually quite a bit. So that's 20 rotations times 2 times pi times the lever arm of 0.22 meters and that comes actually out to 28 meters which means I had to rotate the handle approximately 80 feet which is quite a bit but of course I expect that too because I am not going to have a free lunch here that ideal advantage over here is going to kick down my force appreciably to the 10 newtons here from original 2700 newtons but when I jack it up 0 0.09 meters, well, I have to rotate that handle quite a bit, those 28 meters. So that's where, again, the mechanical advantage goes in and tells me that, hey, but you have to rotate a whole lot more than you actually lift it. Okay, the actual measured force was 40 newtons, which is actually four times as high as what the expected effort force should be. Ideal or expected effort force versus actual measured force, of course, that one here does not take into account the friction that's involved when I turn it's between the handle and the perhaps little eye that you saw here sorry that I don't have a handle on here and then of course the friction in here the friction in there so that all plays in alright then the work with the lever that is oh that with the screw or lever that would be then 40 newtons times 28 meters
and that comes out to around at 1,100 joules, which is quite a bit more than doing it without using the car jack. But then again, I need the car jack because otherwise I can't lift it by myself. So I take that into account. Of course, this one here um, is all the energy I got that got lost due to friction. Okay, the actual mechanical advantage comes out to dividing the force of the load, which is the weight, 2,700 newtons, by the force that I actually measured, so 40 newtons, so 2,700 divided by 40. So that's around at 68. And then finally the efficiency, which is divide the 240 joules just lifting the, the car with bare hands by the 1,100 joules lifting the car actually with the car jack. So two hundred forty joules divided by one thousand one hundred and that comes out to twenty two percent and earlier I said something about my estimate here 600 pounds is really one significant figure so my end result I should just put into one significant figure about 20 percent and those are the example data for using a car jack Go. Okay, so this is about the inclined plane. In this case, it's a ramp. And I think I have to speak up because there are cars here and we're outside. Okay, so I'm going to pull it all the way the, up the ramp. We measured earlier, that's 24 meters. Um, I put all this weight in here, which is pretty much a couple of buckets full of water. If you want, come over here and just show that there's a lot of water in here. And this one is full of water to put enough weight in there. We weighed everything earlier and we came up with 64 kilograms. For the entire thing and if I try to lift that I am not very uh, successful um, so rather than lifting it up the stairs I'm going to use this ramp here which should be relatively easy and of course you can see that I can pull this easily so I'm going to attach the scale here again this is measuring in pounds I have to see that it, uh, what it's doing in the horizontal and the horizontal is actually almost zeroed so that's pretty good I don't have to add or subtract anything okay and then I'm gonna pull here and I'm measuring about actually this time around let's see I'm measuring only 12 pounds earlier we measured a little bit more but let's go with the 12 pounds that I just measured Okay, so here we go, and then I just pull it all the way up. And this is pretty easy. Of course, I'm not going to get a free lunch. I have to apply my effort for a much longer distance for these 24 meters here, while, which is about 70 feet. While over there, if I lifted it up the stairs, I had to exert a huge amount of force, kind of like 600 some newtons, or about 140 pounds. To lift but I only would have to lift it 0.87 meters up the stairs again I'm not going to get a free lunch here but that would be a whole lot harder which of course is the idea behind a simple machine just such as the ramp to reduce the amount of force with which I pulled versus lifting it but again I have to apply that over a much longer distance okay so again yeah I measured 12 pounds the mass of the entire assembly here is 64 kilograms and, and again unfortunately this is measuring in pounds oh well um, and then the entire length of the ramp is 24 meters and if I lifted it up the stairs here we measured that as well it was 87 centimeters roughly three feet all right good thank you
So this is the block and tackle that we have set up here. It's, it's a bigger, more industrial version. And I'm trying to talk as loud as I can because there's a lot of noise coming here from the refrigerators in the cafe over here where we have, where we have set it up across from it. So anyway, we have the block and tackle here, a couple of pulley systems here. And um, so these I, I got these at a hardware store. And somebody welded this one on to me because it's missing the eyes over here. So I needed to attach it, of course, here. And then also this one doesn't have an eye here, so we had to tie it from um, the top here, which means that we actually have four segment lines running down, so an even number. When you tie it to the top here, you have an even number. Uh, anyway, so we're gonna put, we put a load on here, that bucket here, and I had measured it. I had, we had put half full with, with half amount of water. And this one here is also half water, and I believe we measured 25 pound mass for the mass of, on this one here. Okay, so which means that this one is also 25 pounds in here. And you, you just saw a moment ago that I had to lift quite quite a bit here. Well, over here I have the hauling line, and I attach the um, spring scale to that. So I'm going to measure that in a moment, and you will see it's going to be relatively easy for me to do. Still, I have to put quite a bit of work and force into it. Overall, I should have an ideal mechanical advantage of four because I have four segment lines running down. Of course, I'm not gonna get a free lunch because I expect that I have to pull this four times as much on this side, on the hauling line, in order to lift the bucket up all the way here, which I had measured to 70 centimeters or 0.7 meters. Okay, so now I'm gonna take the measurement here. And if you could come over here, and I'm gonna pull on this one here. And it measures, oh, I turn it around. I wanna measure Newtons. I measure, I wanna say 40 Newtons, 41 Newtons. There we go. So 41 Newtons is how much I measure. 41 Newtons is about 10 pounds, a little bit less. And I think you can see that, that this is a whole lot easier than trying to lift the bucket. But still I have to put quite a bit of work in and you see that I have to really pull a lot of hauling line in order to get at those 0.7 meters or two and a half feet up. And then I better release it slowly. And that's my measurements for a more or less industrial pulley system block and tech. Okay, so this is about the lever and more or less an industrial lever, which is the shovel here with which I'm gonna lift the armchair. And I have to say it already that this is a whole lot easier to lift at least half the armchair with the shovel than compared to with me lifting it by hand. Okay, we took a few measurements ahead of time. We have a couple of scales here, if you can come, could come over here. And um, Jerry's the one filming and he helped me with this experiment. And he stood on one scale, I stood on the other one. We measured our, our mass, then we both carried the armchair on it and measured the mass of the armchair, which came out to 33 kilograms. However, what I have to remember is because I'm, with this lever, I'm only gonna lift half the armchair, I wrote down 16.5 kilograms as the mass of half the armchair. Okay, then, that yeah, pretty much was, was the only thing we did ahead of time. Well, that's not true, I'll show you in a moment. But what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to attach this scale here, this um, the spring scale, which unfortunately only measures in pounds. And if you can see that, if I hold it right side up, it's already a little bit off. But it so turns out that in order to hook it into the lever here, I have to hold it upside down. And here it's actually quite a bit off, and we figured it's about two pounds off. And this may not show, so I'm just going to say that actually I have to add about two pounds once I have measured. Okay, so now here, pull on here, and there we go. And then I'm measuring about 10 pounds plus the other two that I had. So 12 pounds is what I 
measure in lifting this arm chair and then the height we measured that earlier that I'm lifting it past the armchair to a height of 16 centimeters and I pull the lever down to by 57 centimeters we came up. So lift here 16 centimeters and then pull this one down by 57 centimeters and all the rest here can be calculated with the data that I just gave. Okay, thank you.